Parties come together to find a solution right to right the national crisis. For more on this and the president's new jobs plan, Congressman Peter Welsh, a Democrat from Vermont, joins us. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Some have expressed surprise at Mr. Cantor and Mr. Boehner's apparent conciliatory tone in recent days, particularly after the president's speech last week. Are you surprised? Well, I'm not really. You know, we've all been home in August, and I think the Republicans were hearing the same thing as Democrats were, and that is people are pretty fed up. They see the Congress as good at gridlock, but that's translated into like 80% uh, of the American people thinking Congress is doing a really bad job, and they're right. So the only way we're going to make progress is if we work together. By the way, working together means we've got to be willing to make some cuts. They've got to be willing to go with us on some revenues. And the president is focusing on jobs, which everybody knows is what the real issue is for us in this economy. Eric Cantor has said that he didn't like the implication that this was an all or nothing plan. Do you accept that the president's proposal may be a little too ambitious, putting so many elements together in the one bill? Well, it shouldn't be all or nothing. I mean, essentially, the bottom line is what so you is agree. You agree with Eric Cantor on that? That it's not all or nothing, sure. I think the House uh, Republicans and Democrats working together might make suffocations. For instance, I much more favor infrastructure. I favor having much more of an investment-oriented stimulus as opposed to a consumption-oriented stimulus. So there may be some room that Republicans and Democrats can work together. But the president, I think, as long as we're moving towards a real jobs plan, ought to be part of that, and I suspect he would. The president told Congress today, no games, no politics, in his words, no delay. Do you like the look of the president now with greater assertiveness, even an element of impatience? And isn't this all about time? Well, it is. I, there was a lot of uh, enthusiasm about the president's speech. And, you know, there was some disappointment, as you know. So, Mr. Welsh, you're, you're, you're saying that you are pleased at this new countenance, as it were, on the president? Well, we've got to engage the fight. I mean, bottom line, the American people get it, and that is we're shredding jobs. And we can talk deficit all we want, and we do need long-term deficit relief, but people have got to get back to work. We've got between people who are out of work and people looking for work, and so discouraged and not in the labor force, about 16% unemployment. This is a crisis. So we've got to have a president who's leading, who's fighting, who's uh, drawing lines uh, and engaging in the battle. Republicans have said they will not support new government spending. And we've heard today of a potential change to the tax code which would close certain loopholes. And as you and I know, Mr. Welsh, that is anathema to so many of these Republicans who have sworn that they will never raise taxes. Right. And this is where I hope that they've gotten the message as we've gotten the message from the American people. Many of my Republican friends know that the tax code is a mess. We clean up some of those loopholes that are not doing anything productive to create jobs and are just giveaways to people or industries like ethanol that don't need them. And that's the way we get revenue. And then we spend it in places where we've been neglecting, like the infrastructure, you know, our roads and bridges, our railroads, our ports. These are investments for the long term that will benefit economy. And I'd like to see us find some common ground on A, cleaning up the tax code, getting rid of things that are useless, and B, uh, rebuilding our country. That's what we could do together. I think we'd all agree with that. Final question, Congressman. Is this bill going to pass? I don't know. You know, seriously, we've been chastened. You know, whether you're Republican or Democrat, the blame game is over. The American people are indicting all of us. And the most important thing for us to get going is to restore some confidence after the debt ceiling debacle that this institution can make decisions in a timely way that will benefit the country. Congressman Peter Welsh, as ever, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Next, the issue.